Hey everybody and welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to do a video on squaring and flattening a board on all sides and making it ready for joinery. Not quite ready for finishing. This is just to get the board flat and square so that we can make it ready for joinery. <clears throat> what I have here is a, a board that is, uh, as you can see, it rocks here. If you turn it on this side, see a piece of paper goes right under it almost the whole length. So this board has a you know, a bow to it, so to speak. Uh, I'll go like this, and you can probably see that it has quite a, a nasty warp to it. It doesn't seem to be twisted that bad. Um, twist, well, it is twisted as well. You can see when we push on these two corners, they move, so these two corners are a little higher. Um, <clears throat> the way we flatten a board, I'm going to do this with power tools. Uh, there are three ways really to do uh, this process. You can use all power tools, you can use all hand tools, or you can do a hybrid version where you do some power tools and some hand tools. Uh, for this video we're going to do power tools and I'm going to minimize the amount of power tools by just using three. I'm going to use the jointer, the table saw, and the planer. Uh, I'm not going to uh, <clears throat> uh, use my radial arm saw uh, which is what I would normally use to bring the ends down to the, the length of the board, I'm going to use the table saw. Uh, you all might have a chop saw, a, a miter saw, you know, compound sliding miter saw, whatever you have in your, in your shop, and you can use those. I'm using the smallest amount of tools I can use to show you how to do this. Now obviously big, long, eight foot long boards, if you're doing this too, you'd probably want to use the chop saw. But a board this length, this, this board, um, so you know, I'm working off plans. This is an apron for a table I'm building. <clears throat> and this board needs to be 34 and a half inches by 3 inches. Uh, and, uh, you know, my, my goal for this board is to get it as thick as I can, but flat. Um, what the reason for that is there's going to be tenons on each end of this leg. And I'd like the tenons to be as thick as I can make them um, for structure and sturdiness of the table. Um, so this board, with the curve it has, it may end up being, you know, I'm, I'm positive we'll get it flat and we'll get it square. By square, I mean square from a face to an edge, you know, a perfect square here. If we were to take a square to it, it would be square. And you want to know something? This one's almost square right now. Uh, so that part won't be that hard. <clears throat> but my fear is, you know, I want this board to hopefully be 7 eighths of an inch thick, which would allow me to do a 3 eighths of an inch tenon. Uh, if we go too much below 3 quarters of an inch, uh, I'm not going to have a thick enough tenon for what I want to do. Um, if you remember back when I did the video on how to go to a lumber yard and what to do, I mentioned buy extra lumber. This is why. Occasionally a board, when you get it cut out of uh, its full length, this board was 7 feet long, you know, this is a piece I've cut out of it. Um, over time, you can see this board moved, and because it moved, um, we may not be able to get it to uh, a thickness that we want. This board is uh, 15 sixteenths of an inch thick right now, so we have a little bit of playroom, but I don't know if we have enough to get that whole curve down. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, so this is a three or four step process. Uh, the first process is at the joiner. So I'm going to get set up at the joiner and we'll move over there and continue with the first uh, two processes, which is to flatten and make a reference face and then square a reference edge to it. So that'll be at the joiner. That's where we're headed now. All right, everybody. So here we are at the joiner. And my joiner is a, um, you know, it's a bench top joiner. It is uh, six inches wide. But the overall length of the entire tool is, I want to say, 30 inches, uh, 28 inches, something like that. Um, so it is, it is, it is a, it is a fine tool, but it's not, a, not a very large tool. It's good for uh, hobbyist woodworkers, you know, guys that build boxes. Um, you know, somebody I, I read somewhere once that they say you should only join a board that is twice the length of your tables. So here, you know, we could do a four and a half, five foot board on this thing. You're not gonna really be very successful trying to do eight, nine, 10, 12 foot boards on a, on a joiner this size. But the 34 inch board we're looking to do here will work fine on this joiner. So it is a good tool for smaller projects. <clears throat> a little information on a joiner. What a joiner does is it actually flattens the board. Um, 
Flattening a board is a process of taking the high spots of the board and bringing them down to the low spots. Um, so in, in our board that we're working with, because it has a bow like this, a cup if you will, um, you know, the two high spots here, if it's in this form, are here. So the first time you go over the board, we're going to put the ends that touch down so that the cup is like this. If you use it with the cup like this, the board could rock this way and it could be difficult. If you have the ends touching on both sides of the table, it's much easier to take those high spots and bring them down. Um, and the way a joiner is set up is the outfeed table. Um, here's the blade. So you come from this side and you go across the blade to the outfeed table. The outfeed table is set at a fixed height that is exactly the same height as your blades are. The infeed table is adjustable up and down, which will adjust the height of your cut. So as you bring the board across, and we'll do that here, we'll show you. So as you're going across on the infeed table, we'll open this up for you. You can see it will hit the blade and the blade will cut. And then as it is removed, as the material is removed, it will be the exact height of the outfeed table. So it will stay square and go across the, the uh, the outfeed table giving you a, uh, a cut that is bringing the high spots down. When you make your final cut and you hear cutting going across the whole length of the board, you've brought the high spots to the low spots and you've, ha you've flattened the board, you have a flat board. So I'm going to fire this up now and we're going to flatten the face first. Okay guys, we're going to start by flattening the face. Now I may not be in the picture for all of these because I want you to see what's happening here on the joiner. Uh, you don't really want to see me anyway. Like I said, we are going to start with the bow of the board. Here you can see the, the middle is touching. We want to start with the ends touching, so the cup is like this. And for this particular uh, face joining, the first piece, you honestly don't need to use the fence. Uh, I'll probably push against the fence just for uh, um, getting you know some, some contact points there. But we're not squaring at this point. We're just flattening the first face. Okay, so let's, uh, let's fire it up and get going. I have a pair of push sticks here that I will use to push across as I'm moving. Okay, for that first cut, I don't know if you can see, I'm hoping that we're getting shine here, um, but it's shining here and it's shining here because we got full contact here and here, but we didn't get anything cut here in the middle. You could probably hear uh, the change in pitch where it wasn't cutting in the middle. So that's good. We removed some material here and we removed some material here. And you can see maybe this ridge right here, I made a mistake there. My fence is actually too far back, so I actually... This little quarter inch was not on uh, the table where the blade was. So I got to adjust the fence a little bit so that we don't have that problem. Okay, that should solve that. So now we just want to keep running through until we get a solid cut. All right, guys, I killed the volume here because you don't want to hear that machine screaming. Uh, so I'll do a little talk over here to let you know that I'm just running several passes on this face to get it closer to flat, and then we'll go back to normal volume. Okay, as you can see here, we are getting, we just have this area right here now that is still not made contact. So this is our low spot. So we got to keep taking these high spots down until we get to this low spot. And I don't know if you can see here, I got a couple of curly lines here. That's a chip in my blade. Um, I actually ordered a sharpening device to sharpen these blades, and I also ordered a, uh, an alignment jig that will let me move these blades a little bit that might um, make me be able to avoid that nick. But I'm going to move the fence in a little bit to uh, hopefully eliminate some of those nicks.
Okay, we'll see how that Okay, we have now flattened this board. Um, it has made a perfect cut the whole length, and it's flat. So we'll now move on to the next. Uh, I'm going to run this through the planer to get rid of that. We'll now move on to the next uh, option, which is to square this edge and flatten this edge and make it square to the face. So I'm going to reset up, and we'll go to that one. All right, guys, the first step when you're going to do the edge jointing is to square the table to the fence. So we got a little machinist square out here. You just want to check it in a few spots. So we want to do the same thing with, uh, with the edge. We want the two ends to touch at the ends. This board is pretty good. Uh, literally, it's only going to need a couple of swipes to get this flat and square. But if you had a board that had a cup like this, a bow, you know, that was very exaggerated, but you know what I mean. If there was a little bit of a hollow on the bottom, you'd want that hollow to be going like this so that your ends were touching. Uh, that's closest on this. Now my reference face, the face we just jointed, goes up against the fence and then we cut. Now we have to reference against the fence. So we're referencing our, our recently flattened face against the fence and running the edge over the tables to square them off. Hey guys, here's another view, just because, well, yeah, you've been looking at that other camera sitting there the whole video, so I figured I'd show you why it's there. Just another view to show you the uh, board going over with the uh, fence uh, squaring the edge. Okay, and that's it, guys. We now have a reference face, and I'm going to mark this. I'm going to grab my pencil. And I'm going to take this reference face and I'm just going to put a little swirly um, like that. So it's just a little swirly pointing to the bottom. And then here where it meets, we make a carrot mark pointing up. So both reference faces are pointing to one another. So let's move on to the table saw. That's our next stop. Okay, guys, here we are at the table saw. Uh, we are going to set this up for a three inch rip. Um, Here's our, reference, here's our reference marks, here's our reference face, here's our reference edge. And if we were to take a square, let's see if I can hold this where you can see it. We are pretty good. We're looking square there. What we want to do, now, my, my, uh, my destination for this is three inches. Now I have a one, two, three block here. Um, I, I don't trust my gauge over here. I'll set it to three inches and see what we get. Okay, that says three inches, and you can see I got what looks like about a, oh, I don't know, a good sixteenth of an inch difference there. So let's, set the fence for the three inches, reference face down, reference edge to the fence, and rip away.
That's it, guys. We are three quarters of the way to finishing four sides. And yeah, I know, I get sawdust on me all the time. Next stop is the planer. I'll get us set up for that. The planer will take and thickness boards. That's why we go to the joiner first and we flatten a face so that we can take the face that we flattened, put it down to the flat table, and then with some uh, friction rollers that move the board through, we can have the blade come across, again, moving, removing the high spots, leaving the low spots, until you make enough passes through that it takes all the high spots out and you have low spots. So it is flattening this side. Caveat being, it will only flatten this side if this side is flat. If you put a crooked board through a planer, it will just thickness a crooked board and keep it crooked. So that's one thing to remember. That's why we have to do the joiner and the planer. So reference down, I've got this set. Right now I'm on the finishing cut. I'm gonna switch this over to the dimensioning cut when I turn it on. Um, <clears throat> Caveat to the DeWalt planer, you, uh, uh, you only move this switch when it's running. So you'll see me make this move when I turn it on. Okay, I guess I should have told you beforehand. I have all four aprons to the table. Um, I did not run any of them through the thickness planer uh, until I had the final one ready because I want to thickness them all to the same thickness. Now you can see here, um, I hope you can see, I had chalk marked up this uh, board. Um, you can see there's some chalk marks here that stop right here. And there's a little bit here. So what this is doing, this is a, uh, this is a low spot and this is a low spot. Remember, we jointed the uh, the curve in the board on this side, but this side still has a bow to it. So you notice it took some here and took some here because it's t it just took the bow, the top of the bow off. The next pass through, I'm guessing, will be about here. Um, so let's make a uh, one full crank of this thing as a sixteenth of an inch. I'm going to go slow here. I'm going to go a half a crank, and then we'll run them all through again. Here's our board. It moved some, but I didn't take that much off. So let's give it a full crank this time and see how much we remove. I'm going to do just this one board so we see it. Okay, as you can see, maybe you can, maybe you can't. There's the chalk line. It's down to here. So you can see there's a lot of this hump that has to go away, but it's only taking the high spot. So each time we're moving a little bit more this way. Let me get these other three boards through, and then we'll make another cut. Okay, we're moving forward. We only have this much left. Um, and you know, this board at the end is a little uh, screwed up. Uh, it's a little thin. So I don't know that we're going to get that last little bit. So let me do a measurement and see what this board we need. Oh, we need most of it. But that's okay, because there's going to be a 10 in there. Um, so I'm going to do one more pass. Where are we at for thickness? We are right at three quarters now. So I'm going to do one finish cut. Which means I'm going to take and turn this from two to one, give it one more finish cut, and we'll be done. Um, finish cut, I'm going to only do a half a crank. Guys, there we have it. We have perfectly, perfectly smooth boards. 
Um, these boards, are, this, this machine makes a board so smooth, it is amazing. Uh, the last step, we're going to go back to the table saw, bring these things to their final width. So we'll set up over there. Okay guys, we are back at the table saw, and I am going to do one thing here that I need to do because I am making a squaring cut. Um, I have a very good uh, Incra, is this an Incra? Who makes this thing? I shouldn't say the wrong name of a tool. Yeah, Incra, this is the Incra 1000, I believe. This is a very accurate uh, uh, miter gauge, but I want to make sure it's square to my blade. Um, and this plastic uh, speed square is good enough for this. So I have it perfectly square there. I want to bring it through to where it's not touching a tooth that's sticking out. And as you can see, I hope you can see, I am very square here. So as long as I hold my board square to this miter gauge, I should cut a nice square end. Anyway, so let's square one of these up and we'll end this video. These are good. So there's our uh, boards literally finished on all six sides. Like I said, they're ready for joinery. They're not ready for finish yet. Um, I have some sanding to do, obviously. I still have a little line here from where the chip is in my joiner blade. That sands out. That's no big deal. That doesn't affect the joinery at all. Um, so like I said, this is prepared for joinery, which is our next step. All right, everybody, just quickly to finish this video up, uh, we now have four legs and four aprons perfectly square and flat, ready for joinery, which will be our next video. Uh, I really wanted to just wrap this video up to show you how good uh, lumber can look when it's uh, properly milled. And honestly, it is pivotal in woodworking to have properly milled lumber. Uh, joinery just goes haywire if your lumber is not flat and square. It's very, very difficult, and I believe it's one of the most frustrating things for new woodworkers is to be working with warped lumber and trying to get uh, joinery to work. You really need flat, square lumber to do it, which is why we did this video today. So this video is kind of in and out of my table build video. I use the parts from the table build to do this. Um, the next video I do will be actually starting the joinery. We'll be cutting mortises in these legs. So that's coming up next. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoy videos like this, uh, please let me know. Please leave some comments down below. Hit the like button. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Um, if you'd like to see these done but in a different format, let me know. I kind of like to go with the flow. These videos become a little longer. I know a lot of YouTube guys make their videos like 10 minutes, and that that's... The 10 minute number is for uh, marketing when you're monetized. You know, you see a lot of 10 minute and one second videos because they want, you know, they get they get another uh, commercial if they uh, um, hit 10 minutes. That's why they do that. Uh, because I'm not monetized yet, I really don't care how long my videos go, but I care if you don't want them to go a certain length. So let me know what you think, because I could edit these down to 15 minutes or so, this one. This is a little bit longer. It wouldn't be very informative if I did this at 10 minutes, but. Uh, I could make two 10-minute videos and probably show you everything you needed to see. Um, so it's really up to you all what you want to see. Go ahead and tell me in the comments. Um, I like to show a few mistakes when I make them and show you uh, the full thing. You know, it gets a little boring, but you always know how to fast forward by it if I'm kind of stuck on something. So let me know what you think. Again, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.